Jesus name we pray amen 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 so yesterday yesterday okay uh, can you can you give me the uh, co-host rights frame so that i can share the document yesterday we were thinking uh, we have discussed about hermeneutics and uh, hermeneutics we have understood it is like a methodology or a framework or set of rules of interpreting the bible how we can interpret the bible and uh, we have also seen an example what text says and what actually it means you remember in the matthew chapter 5 jesus was mentioning about adultery and he said that if anyone has committed sin or if anyone if your right hand is objecting you cut it off and throw it away from you that's what the text says but actually the meaning the interpretation or the meaning behind the scripture is something else so that we have seen and we have also discussed about exegesis eccesis right the major differences between exegesis and eccesis exegesis means interpreting out of this text when we read a scripture when we read the word of god and interpreting out of that scripture is exegesis uh let me just uh, share the document uh so eccesis means eccesis actually trying to arrive uh to the interpretation from our from our preconception preconception or with a biased opinion right with a biased opinion so if we have something in our mind even the text seems to be speaking the same thing because we approach the text we try to interpret the text with this preconceived idea or preconceived opinion so that's called easy jesus so many times it's a great danger in while interpreting the scripture because it is not the thought of god but it is our thought which is going to be reflected out of this interpretation so that's the reason many times the word is uh, misinterpreted and uh, sometimes in in the uh, christian terminology it is called pelling of the word pelling of the mean, word means uh trying to twist the word according to our own opinions that is called ec jesus we have we have seen that and homiletic homiletics means application of how how practical application of the text for us today and uh, yes we have uh, read about uh, the scripture we have interpreted correctly and we understood it correctly but how it is going to benefit me today for to for my day to day life is homiletics so as we apply hermeneutics in a uh, in a constructive way we have also seen the foundational rules of uh, applying the hermeneutics we say that the lord is almighty and uh, all the scripture is inspiration of the holy spirit god it's not written by people it is written by the inspiration of the holy spirit god and infallibility of the scripture that means the every single word in the scripture is correct there is nothing wrong in it right and we also have seen the right understanding right use of the hermeneutics is necessary it is very much necessary so we have all already discussed all these things now let's move on to the next uh, steps how do we apply this hermeneutics how uh, while interpreting the bible while studying the bible how do we apply it so i i request you to write down these steps for you is a historical analysis contextual analysis lexical analysis syntactical analysis literary analysis application analysis comparison analysis these are like the few steps that are framed that are uh, that helps us to interpret the word correctly so uh, can you can you write them okay however i'm going to share this uh, 
the document also with you later. All right. So historical analysis. Remember, history or the culture or history. The Bible is a book which has uh, records of history and uh, which has uh, uh, teachings, which has uh, prophecies, which has guidelines. So all these are compiled together in the Bible. And in every context, we also need to understand the history and culture of the period where it was, when it was written. I'll give you an example. Uh, let's turn our books to Mark chapter uh, 
Oh, I'm sorry. I'm. I was speaking in mute. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. So I was mentioning about uh, one incident where Jesus was invited by a Pharisee to his house, and Jesus went to the house, and there is one woman. She has come and uh, uh, she washed the feet of Jesus and anointed. and uh, was crying and was wiping the feet of jesus with her uh, uh, hair and uh, the anointed person the one who has whoever has anointed jesus and uh, was murmuring and grumbling in their hearts and saying that why would Je why jesus is allowing this person uh, this woman to do that and uh, why jesus is doing this and they were murmuring so jesus answered to them saying that see i have come to your, your your house you did not give me water to wash my feet you did not anoint uh can we turn our books to luke chapter 7 luke chapter 7 verse 37 38 gospel of luke chapter 7 uh right so today will be little fast because we have little time okay so i'll read for you then one of the pharisees asked him to eat with him and he went to the pharisee's house and sat down to eat and behold a woman in the city who was a sinner when she knew that jesus sat at the table in the pharisee's in the pharisee's house brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil and stood at his feet behind him weeping and she began to wash his feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head and she kissed his feet and anointed them with the fragrant oil now when the pharisees who had invited him saw this he spoke to himself saying this man if he were a prophet would know who and what manner of woman this is and who is touching him for she is a sinner and jesus answered and said to him simon i have something to say to you so he he said teacher say it. there was a certain creditor okay here we'll read 44 verse 44 do you see this woman i entered your house you gave me no water for my feet but she has washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her, hair of her head you gave me no kiss but this woman has not ceased to kiss my feet since the time i came in You did not anoint my head with oil, but this woman has anointed my feet with fragrant oil. So here, this scripture is reading like uh, we read the scripture. So when we understand the custom and culture of the <clears throat> then Jewish society, that time in the Jewish society, if anyone was invited to a house and uh, somebody has come as a like guest, so they give water to wash their feet. and they anoint their head with the oil so anointing is like rubbing a uh, head with the oil so they will anoint and they will kiss and they welcome them in the house grandly that is their culture that is their custom so here jesus was in, in, uh, invited by the pharisee and uh, the pharisee did not do all these things so if now here is a classic example of uh, Uh, understanding the history and the culture analysis like uh, interpreting the scripture uh, through hermeneutics by understanding the history of that times so when we when we are reading the scripture we might think that uh, this woman because she is a sinner she was uh, uh, doing uh, she was uh, uh, what do you call out of her uh, uh, gratitude she is doing all that yes she is doing all that out of the great gratitude that uh, uh, because she has her sins are forgiven but she is accepted by jesus so out of gratitude she is doing all that and main thing if we understand the history we can also see the second facet of the uh, instant second facet of the instant why did pharisee did not do all these things when he has invited jesus why did he not do you have you have invited a prophet in their view in their point of view jesus was a prophet that's what he was mentioning even the later uh, 
verses. He says, like, if he was a prophet. So they were considering him as a prophet. So if you have invited a prophet to your house, would you not honor him? Would you not, uh, uh, you know, pay the uh, uh, good <coughs> hospitality to him? So actually, when we understand that the Pharisee, the one who has invited Jesus, deliberately he did not do that. That's why Jesus is mentioning, you did not do this to me. You have invited, but you did not do this. But you see, she is honoring. The honor is not stopped. Honoring of the God is not stopped. So like that, we can also look at the other facet of the uh, scripture. And uh, we, we can try to interpret the little in-depth in meaning of the scripture. And another classic example is uh, John, Gospel John, chapter 4. And Jesus goes and uh, speaks to a Samaritan woman. And the Samaritan woman was uh, surprised. He says, uh, how can you be a Jew speaking to me? So there we can understand one thing, that uh, those times, why Jews are not speaking to Samaritans? Then we should have that question. Why Jew, Jews are not speaking to Samaritans? From her words, it is understood that Jews were not speaking to or not fellowshipping with Samaritans. So we understood that. Then next question should come, why? Why the Jews were not having fellowship or speaking to Samaritans? Then if we drill a little deep, the most of the people from Samaria or Samaritan, or uh, impure Jews. That means the Jews consider them impure. Why they consider them as impure? Because most of these Jews in the Samaria, they, they have married Gentiles. So they have, uh, you know, they have violated the law of Moses that uh, one should not marry a Gentile. You should not give your daughter to a gentle man or you should not take a daughter from your uh, the gentle uh, from gentiles from heathen uh, people so because these people have done that and they have uh, raised offspring which are not completely Jews so they consider them as impure so that's the reason though they are because if you closely understand this passage that where the Jesus was conversing with the Samaritan woman. If we closely observe that passage, she was mentioning Jacob as our father. She is referring Jacob is as our father, our, their pa patriarch. Not she is not saying your father Jacob. No, she is not saying that. She is saying that our father Jacob. So they are also Jews, but not completely. Jews, but they, they Jews consider them as impure. That is the reason they don't mix up with these Samaritans. So then we can understand the history and the cultural analysis. Everything, every scripture, every word, then when we are reading, there are ample of uh, examples like this. When we go to the Gospel John, verse uh, second chapter, when where Jesus have uh, made water into wine. So there it is said, it is mentioned that uh, for the cleansing, because the, the Jews, the cleansing purpose, there were six pots. What is this cleansing? So those are the pots uh, where the water was there and people who come, who will come to house, they will wash their feet, they will wash their hands, they will wash their face. So this is the, like a uh, custom and the culture of that then society. So because we have crossed other years now so the customs and the cultures have changed a lot and especially our countries we have a different cultures we have a different society uh, different uh, customs so in order to understand the word correctly we also have to analyze and uh, consider the historical aspect of it right so the historical situation and uh, Ask what is the general historical situation facing the writer and his audience.
so that also will help us and uh, what are the uh, customs uh, of then society why jesus was crucified he should have been killed right why why jesus was crucified he should have been killed uh, differently uh, they might have cut his head or they might have beheaded him they might have killed him with arrows or they might have killed him uh, with uh, uh, by putting him uh, in a different type of uh, um, capital punishment you see peter was crucified up and upside down whereas paul was beheaded why paul was beheaded why peter was crucified upside down then we get to know some customs in the society the roman citizens the capital punishment of roman citizens is only to be to, to be beheaded you understand because paul was a roman citizen if they want to kill paul there is no other punishment they should give to paul the only one thing he should be beheaded so and uh, you see the peter or uh, like jesus the cross is the the most cruel capital punishment for anyone in the roman uh, roman empire so jews were referring to the the most cruel punishment in the empire to jesus so we understand so the little uh, study of the culture and customs will help us a lot to understand the word greatly and another point ask who is the writer and what was his spiritual background and experience my dear brothers and sisters i recommend this very strongly when you are trying to read a book okay when you are trying to read a book or read a, uh, a particular book from the bible do a little study of who is the author who wrote this book okay who wrote esther book book of esther who wrote book of esther we do not know or we may not pay much attention so this is uh, what we should do uh, we should read little about the author who is the one who wrote it we 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 might have uh, heard about uh, book of esther and we might have read about it read the book but often we do not give much attention to the person who wrote this so mordekai has uh, he, he has written the book of esther so when we know mordekai we can uh, study a bit about him or from the scripture or from the available information so what is his spiritual background and experience for example let's see hagai the book of hagai uh, am i clear am i audible yes sir okay thank you so the book of hagai let's see the book of hagai so then while reading the book of hagai it says like uh, hagai uh, chapter 2 verse 5 it says the my spirit is among you in, in the midst of you uh, and uh, you do not worry and you start doing the work that's what it says see i'll read it for you hagai uh chapter 2 verse 5 okay chapter 2 verse 5 it says according to the word that i covenant i covenanted with you when you came out of egypt my spirit remains among you do not fear for thus says the lord of hosts once more it is a little while i will shake so uh, fourth verse yet now be strong zerubbabel says the lord and be strong joshua son of jehosh jehozazar the high priest and be strong all you people of the land says the lord and work for i am with you says the lord of hosts so 
it's the scripture so when we are reading this uh, word when we are reading the book of hage we need to do a little study the why what is the condition that time why did god speak through hage what was he speaking then then we understand that it's about the uh, work that they were doing in the temple building and as well as the building the the fort uh, walls so god was encouraging people through his prophets and zerubbabel being the governor of judea then and jehozabad uh, jehozazad jehozadak uh is being the chief priest so this is also understanding uh a writer and his spiritual background and experiences for example we see uh jekariah jekariah being a priest is uh, is from the levi he is a levite so uh, it mentions like zekariah who is son of and so and so so that's one more thing that we need to really uh, keep in mind before we analyze the scripture and uh, what is the spiritual commitment of the original audience so most of this bible uh, the letters or the scripture was written to the uh, was have ministered to the people first for whom it was written for example when i am just mentioning the example of hagai so when we are mentioning uh, reading hagai so it was written and it has ministered to the people uh, of that time first so in order to understand their spiritual context is also very important so for example jeremiah book of jeremiah when we are reading so there is so much of uh, uh, the what do you call uh, uh, rebuke from the lord exhortation from the lord because people are straying away people are literally following the uh, idol idols and uh, idol worship they were doing uh, a lot of abominable things in the sight of the lord they were uh, you know sacrificing their children so all these things we have to keep in mind while we are interpreting the scripture so history reflects purpose as we were just mentioning determine the purpose the author had writing in the book what uh, i just took an example of hagai or you take an example of zechariah okay so the purpose behind writing this uh, book or the the prophecy of this book why they have written this book or why it was uh, written so we can understand that uh, god was speaking to the people uh, who got uh, uh, disappointed while working the uh, while building the temple so uh, in the leadership of ezra and many people in the leadership of ezra that time people have come and they've started building the uh, temple but after after a while they have really uh, you know got disappointed and uh, uh they, they the work was stopped so for about 20 years they did not work the work was stopped so god again sent his prophets to encourage his uh his people his children that i am with you that's what we just read uh hage 2 4 2 5 like my spirit is with you like the way like the day when you have come out of egypt the same way my spirit is with you so go and do the work he is encouraging people so that also uh, helps us to understand that's what it says determine the purposes the author had in writing the book if you see jeremiah it's all about uh, god exhorting israel warning them that uh, a great a great uh, punishment is going to come upon them that uh, they're going to be taken to babylon if they do not change their ways that's what in jeremiah we see many many times it was uh, uh, mentioned in jeremiah turn to me i will turn to you repent i will i will accept you turn to me it's many times it was mentioned in jeremiah so why it that's that helps us to see 
uh, what God is speaking through this text and what God is actually meant behind this text. So that's why we need to uh, note explicit statements or repeated phrases. That's what I'm just mentioning now. Uh, in Jeremiah, if you see, repent or turn to me. And uh, Jeremiah second chapter, it says like, what, what uh, iniquity that I, you, you find in me that, you know, can we read that uh, uh, one simple scripture, Jeremiah chapter 2. Hmm. 